This is the live poo pipe for the whole house and today we need to cut into it. Hiya folks, welcome back to the show and welcome back to our little mini series about creating a downstairs loo as part of our extension project. And today we are going to be breaking into this live soil stack so that we can put this connector through the wall so that we can connect our new toilet into it. So once again, preparation is key with this one because what you don't want to do is cut into the pipe and then realize that you've got to go and collect some bits. So we've got the new T ready to go in. I've got my multi-cutter ready to cut into here. I've got a slip coupler that we're going to use. So I'm going to try and get this as far up the pipe this way because what we don't want to do is end up with not enough fall and we are going to be tight on the fall so uh, yeah we can't really go much further than that a because of this bracket that I'm too lazy to remove and b because we're getting quite close to the wall here and this is quite thick so around here is going to work quite well and there's a very annoying label on the back of this pipe as well so I'm going to make sure that we miss the point where that label is honestly bane of my life why do they put labels on that don't come off we've also got hex screwdriver ready for all the various slip couplers so that's ready to rock and we've got some silicon lubricant as well oh and that's a very good point i'm gonna have to turn the boiler off on the off chance the central heating comes on we don't want condensate water coming out of here so i'll switch the boiler off quickly Then we can slide down this slip coupler up. Whoa, why is so much water coming out? Mm, I think it's just there's a bit of water in the side of this. Um, uh, there's nothing I can do about that. There shouldn't be much, unless the pipe's blocked. So, should be able to just slide this down. I knew I'd be doing this very shortly, so hence having a slip coupler here makes life a lot easier. Ugh, nice. We can get this pipe completely out the road now. That's it. I forgot to mention earlier, if you are in any way squeamish about touching poo pipes, get the professionals in to do this, because there's no time for mucking about with, Ooh, you can't touch that with bare hands. And you know what happens if you wear gloves doing this? Well, invariably what happens is, the pooey water gets inside the gloves and then um, you're stuck with it there for the whole job and it just ruins the gloves. So you might as well just uh, clean everything out and then give your hands a good scrub and try not to cut yourself while you're doing it. Anyway, ugh. so these pipes are all cleaned up, ready to reconnect. This pipe, the only bit I now need of this is um, the long bit. All of this can go. My hands are too slippy. I need a towel. Let's see if we can get this off. What I would quite like to do is just take a little bit more of this brick out here. I couldn't do it last time because the pipe was in the road, but I just don't want to end up in a situation where this pipe's too high. Otherwise, as I say, we'll not have the fall for the pipe coming in from over there. So let's just nibble a bit of this out.
There we go. So we've just got a nice uh, kind of roundish edge there and it just lets us get this pipe a little bit lower down so that the boss, the, well basically so there's plenty fall to get from the washing machine pipe down to here. So that should be fine there. And I've done the same on the inner leaf as well. So I've just chipped away a little bit more of that brick. So next bit, we need to measure where this pipe's gonna come on here. So that needs to be 30. So 30 is there. Bit of lube. Yeah, that's perfect. Perfect. Right, next job, I'm going to put the pipe into this from the other side. And the reason I'm doing this now is because if, oops, if I've mucked up and I've made this like too high or something, then um, I want to know about it before I connect the rest of the soil pipe up. So again, this label doesn't matter, that'll be inside the cavity. So as long as this ends nice and clean, that's good. Oh yeah, that is rocking. Fully seated home and not catching on anything. And we've got a little bit of wiggle room as well. So let's just do a final check of the height of that. Again, tape measures vanished. So bearing in mind that there's gonna be a wall right here. So it'll, it'll be cut off here eventually. But for the minute, where are we? 145, well 150 really. So if it's 150 there, it's gonna be lower there. That is absolutely perfect. And as I say, we've got a little bit of wiggle anyway, but brilliant, right. And connect the rest of the stack back up and put it all back together. And go and get the big pipe. We'll chop off, I don't know if you can see, but this end, because this is the end that's been inside the slip coupler, uh, it's got like a lime scale on basically. That's awkward to get that off. So this will be the end that will cut. And then I'm just measuring from the inside of this lip here up to the cut off point for that pipe, which you can't really see because I haven't got a wide enough angle lens, but basically, uh, I can do this, I can do it. 147, let's say 1465 to give a little bit of wiggle room. One, four, six, five. Once again, we've got a God damn label right on the join. You don't want labels on the join. Uh. Mother manufacturers, please. Please, whoever makes these pipes, I know some of you watch this channel, Flowplast, and not just Flowplast, other people, if you're gonna stick labels all over your pipes, make them the easy peel ones, not ones that you've got to use like industrial chemicals to get the remnants of it off. I'm gonna put this connection to the top, so an outside taper, doesn't really do anything but what we are going to do is just a little 
inside taper just to um, just to make sure there's no like sharp edges on the inside that stuff might get hung up on. That's all pretty clean there. So slip coupler back on. I'm actually going to put the slip coupler upside down and then any line scale that's inside the slip coupler is now at the top instead of the bottom. So that will go just there. I just need to lube up that bottom pipe a little bit. Lube's vanished. Oh, I brought it inside. It's tricky. I'm going to lube the collar rather than the pipe. Shove these brackets back on. Oh, and by the way, don't forget, now that you've got an open pipe more or less straight into the sewer, don't forget to cover up the end. Or it'll get stinky. easy peel. Why can't they all be easy peel? Yay! Similar with this by the way, we'll go for um, just a slightly chamfered inside with it being um, a slip couplet. But the more critical joint here is the outside, so I'm going to get a little bit of steel wool on that, if I can find my steel wool. That should be fine, and then always grease your nuts. So it's going on that way, we'll put the nuts to the bottom. Makes it so much easier to get back off in the future. And then we're looking at a 54mm hole through into the uh, waste pipe and my main tip here is make sure that your little pilot drill or your centering drill is tight in this because if this falls off inside the poop pipe it's almost impossible to get that back out so uh, yeah don't lose your drill bit or the little plastic cap that's going to fall out as well but hopefully the plastic cap will be left in here. I've got a cap. Get that laid there. And then just shove this in. Again, you can pop some lube on this if you want, but I find sometimes if you put lube on this, it tends to try and fall back out. So if you can get it in, <laughs> if you can get it in without lubing it, then just try and go in dry if you can. Ow. Ah, that's pretty, that's good. Again, it's just checking that you've got no straggly bits of plastic or anything that stuff's going to get caught on. Especially if it's a waste for like a shower or something like that because hairs 
get caught on everything and you can get all sorts of problems. Anyway, right, put that on. Don't go crazily tight. You can always tighten it if there's a leak, but you don't want to split the pipe or anything. That seems pretty good. And the nice thing about this is that it gives a little bit of flex for the pipe to come out and into the boss at the end. So yeah, cool. And just check. Yeah, we've got a good fall on that. That's absolutely spot on. Great. Happy with that. That's all nice and secure into there. That ain't going anywhere. So next job is to get the waste coming out for this side. Ah, uh, I think that'll be all right. That'll be, I'll do it at this end, pointing backwards so you'll never see it. That should be good about there like that. Quickly checked on the other side that it's uh, through far enough. Yep, we are perfect on the other side. So, we'll glue this one up. Just working out that I can get this in once it's glued up. I can. If you do kind of a twist as you put solvent weld stuff together, and then I like to do a, a little kind of smear of any excess glue around that edge. I've never ever had a solvent weld fitting fail. And then, as I say, we want that label hidden away, so get out of it. Again, check, there's no sharp bits, but should be fine. It's only a hand wash basin. Rocking. Right, I need that connector. I can't do, can't do anything else without that. So, same rules apply here. If you struggle, actually, let's make the hole first. Then this is tight getting it on. I'll do it so that just a tiny bit of the pipe pokes out the other end like that. That generally seems to work all right. And as I say, if you're finding it tight getting this in, then a little bit of washing up liquid I find works quite well, as opposed to silicon which makes it really, really slippy and it'll stay slippy for the rest of time. Whereas the washing up liquid tends to kind of dry out after a little while. So close. That seems good. Because you don't want it too far in, otherwise whenever your poops 
are coming down, it's going to hit this pipe. You don't want that. That's not good. But at the same time, you don't want it too far back where it's going to like kind of pop out of its own accord. I think that's pretty good. You can get solvent weld versions of these, but I do kind of like the fact that, you know, if there's a problem later down the line, we can potentially remove that and, and get in. And by the way, yes, we had an access hatch on the old one, but it doesn't really matter because there's three other access hatches on this stack, like right above me. So uh, yeah, there was kind of an excessive amount of access things anyway. Rodding points, that's a fella. What I'm gonna do, have I got a pencil? I do. I'm just gonna put a little pencil mark on here. So if it does pop out before I've cemented everything up, I can see, you can't see that mark, but I can. Anyway, that is done. We're ready to kind of cement everything together now. Right, nice, easy five to one mix. We'll briefly take this moment to chat about building regulations. Yes, you will almost certainly need building regulations approval for a project like this in the UK, so it's important you design everything appropriately. Unless you fully understand all 1500 plus pages of the UK building regulations, then I would suggest getting an architect involved to design things for you. They'll be up to speed with the latest regs and they'll also have a good understanding of the expectations of your local building control. You need to be fully aware of everything from fire safety through to ventilation and drainage requirements. We've covered some aspects of fire protection in a separate video and this includes the use of intumescent pipe collars, fire doors and all that sort of thing, so we'll not go into that today and we'll also cover ventilation in more detail in a future video. In terms of the drainage requirements, they're all explained in part H of the building regs. One important consideration is making sure water isn't siphoned out of your traps whenever someone flushes the toilet, otherwise you'll have gurgling plug holes and nasty smells coming into your house. We're straight into an open vented stack so it's less of an issue but if that's not an option then you might need to install air admittance valves which often get known as dergos. I'm not going to attempt to explain all of that in this video because it'll end up being four hours long. As I say speak to your architect and also have a chat with building control. You can save a lot of going backwards and forwards by putting together plans that are likely to be approved from square one. And that's us done for today. Pretty pleased with that. This is just dry fit on, just again, just to block any smells or anything. And once that's all gone off, we can connect up the waste pipe. I don't want to disturb that at the minute. I've run all the ductwork through as well and mortared all around that as well. So that's all ready to go. At the minute, I've just left it long and we can always trim it back if needs be. Round the other side, everything's all cleaned up and, uh, you know, I'm not going to get any awards for my bricklaying skills, but it's all going to be painted anyway. You're not going to see it. I would have to have taken a whole new level of kind of care and attention if this was going to be in facing bricks. 
which is why generally jobs like this, I would never do this sort of stuff for clients because I'm not a bricklayer. But as I say, for our own house extension, I think that'll be fine once that's all painted. Again, that's the backside of that duct that you just saw earlier. I've left it a little bit long, but uh, we'll see. That actually might work out quite well the way that is. And I've also run the duct through for the external vent and on the outside, all I've done is put some frame sealant around it and I'll leave that to go off a little bit and then the final uh, flappy vent cover thing will go over the top. So I'm quite pleased with that. Again, that took an entire day to run this pipe work in, do all the mortaring and everything else. And, oh, my poor workshop, it looks like it's been shook upside down again. But the nice thing is, that's kind of the hardest part done. And certainly the most unpleasant part anyway. Not sure what we're doing next. I need to uh, give it a little bit of thought. Perfectly flush there and we are perfectly flush there. Right. I guess we'll be doing that then. Folks, as per usual, don't forget you can subscribe on the member zone for a whole load of extra videos and it kind of helps support the channel because I don't do sponsorships on this channel. So it really does help if you support the channel over on the member zone. And there's loads of extra videos and articles and content on there that you can't get anywhere else. Members.gothrithandyman.com. My mic's flopped. No worse than a floppy mic. Anyway, any questions, pop them down in the comments below and be nice to one another, look after each other, and we shall see you next time. Tatty bye.